Well, I brought you here together because we have this challenge. We have this great hospital here, and as you know, we're starting a residency program, and I need to brainstorm with you guys what would a resident want to know about what's happening in this place. So, Dr. Curry. So let's make a video about this. Great idea. Okay. So, I mean, if I wanted to kind of convey the message to people who are watching this video, I would tell them about what we have. I think the first thing that we need to start, this is really a new program, mm -hmm. but it's not a new program. We've been, we've been, tra yeah, yeah. We've been training Absolutely. residents for 37 years. Huh? We have a culture of training residents. Hmm. The only thing that Love we're that. doing differently is we're changing from being an affiliated site to being our own site, mm -hmm. where we have our residents in one place for four years, training, and we can do this because we have everything that needs to be provided mm -hmm. to the residents to become fully rounded physicians. For instance, what do you think? In maternal fit and medicine obstetrics, mm -hmm. we deliver 10,000 patients. If oh. you kind of think about that, 10,000 patients, probably 8,000 of them are normal patients. Mm -hmm. You've got another 2,000 that are with medical or fetal complications. Mm -hmm. And we have an antipartum unit that has 38 beds, and yeah. it's usually full between 70 and 90 percent mm -hmm. occupancy rate. Yeah. So we have a lot of patients. We have a, we have formulated a teaching program on the antipartum, where the residents run the unit with a perinatologist on all on oh. at all times. Uh -huh. So they are really responsible for those residents, uh, for those patients, mm -hmm. and we use those patients for the teaching. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the ultrasound, which is basically a major part of your training now as an obstetrician. Yeah, you cannot right. be an obstetrician without mm -hmm. knowing how to do so ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And we have now an ATU that does about 25,000 procedures. Mm -hmm. We can teach the residents ultrasound. Mm -hmm. That is, we will have a rotation where we put them in there, we attach them to a sonographer. Yeah. By the time they leave here, they should be able to do 80% of the ultrasound procedures that need to be done that in obstetrical, in obstetrical uh, wow. practice. I think there's not many programs where we've got you know, uh, the amount of subspecialty GYN mm -hmm. surgeons on staff. I mean, we have six G1 oncology yeah. surgeons, mm -hmm. uh, almost all of them nationally acclaimed. Mm -hmm. We have four urogynecology mm -hmm. surgeons, and we've got a whole smattering of other uh, routine generalists mm -hmm. that do advanced MIS surgery. What are so, you guys doing robotics now anyway? We have uh, two robots and hopefully getting ready to add in our third oh. robot uh, by the end of by the year. December. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot of, uh, of MIS and robotics. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not all about the robot, mm -hmm. but we certainly can give our trainees uh, a full spectrum of, of uh, educational mm -hmm. experience. You know, I think that um, we do, I believe, over 5,000 uh, GYN surgeries a year. So, I mean, comparable to OB, I mean, mm -hmm. we're way, way out there uh -huh. in terms of people getting a well-rounded experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in addition to just the clinical education, I think our residency, we want to emphasize, is going to dedicate a portion of that third year mm -hmm. to a research endeavor, mm -hmm. whether it be in the laboratory, in the clinic, uh, but the physicians of the future have mm -hmm. got to be investigatively oriented. Personalized care mm -hmm. is where things are going. Um, you know, we have an 8,000 square foot uh, genomics and proteomics laboratory facility mm -hmm. that does systems biology, mechanistic biology, that supports cancer, it supports perinatal disease, mm -hmm. Uh, and it's something that although we have grad students, postdocs, and med students, mm -hmm. we need to pull the residents into that kind of a training environment. I wished I could come here and, and train. Uh, Me real. too. Um, the other thing also is the resources from an administrative point of view that we're putting into simulation and into essentially a teaching faculty which is focused on the latest methods mm -hmm. and methodologies for teaching residents. Um, that's all being woven into this high volume environment. I think you can't um, underplay the importance of having a great place to practice medicine. Mm -hmm. And so first of all, you need that team, you need that commitment, that multidisciplinary team. And one way to build that is through the training and commitment around patient safety, because it's something we all come together over. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing that's very key is ha just having a, pla a great place to practice. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be in a great place to practice, and we're having a new building, a premier women's hospital, the largest on the East Coast to opening up in just two years. Wow. And we hope that the residents not only come here to learn, but we hope they come to here to stay. It's a great area, Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. It's a great, I mean, mm -hmm. we're not in the city, but we are, <coughs> you know, six miles away from the White House. How, how much better can it be? Cool.
Wow. Well, we gotta get this up. Yes. And you'll see, we're gonna get great residents here and they're gonna have an awesome training. Awesome. Awesome. We're, we're there.